Hello, and welcome back to another episode of Callie and Cassie's show. <laughs> it's getting, the name is getting simpler. <laughs> I'm Callie. I'm Cassie. And we're here to talk to you all about financial literacy. Well, all about how to integrate it into the classroom because financial literacy is important in our everyday life because let's face it, we're always using money, right? It is one of those things that kids can't say, we're never going to use this in oh real my life. Gosh. Yeah. So how do you teach it without waiting till, you know, the end of the year after the star test and then trying to cram it in a week or two? Exactly. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about what I have done in the past and it's very beginner. So, um, if you're new to it, then, I'm here to help you. And then for a more, adv- I can't even talk, for a more advanced step, Cassie's going to share with what she's done or share with you. Okay. Anyways, so I've had a lot of coffee. <laughs> All right. So, um, what I have done in the past is had, I've had a number system, not a number system, a money system to where the kids worked hard and earned money. So it taught them responsibility, it taught them uh, needs and wants, it taught them how to earn and save. Um, So it was super easy. All I really did was um, for every test or grade or well, something that was of big significance to them uh, where they really had to work hard, uh, which is everything, not really, but they need to be working hard. So For instance, a test, I would write on the board how much certain things would be worth, like an A or in between this grade or this. Um, And the kids would work hard, obviously, because they wanted to make money. So it's kind of real life. When you work hard, you make money, right? So um, it taught them, you know, how to work hard, things like that. And also the kids, you know, that maybe didn't really make a lot of the higher grades or needed the extra help, they would come in for tutoring and I would pay them for tutoring. So it was a win-win for everybody. And uh, they saved this money. Some of them, I actually passed out little Ziploc baggies from Target. They had like these little snack ones and I gave that to them for wallets, but some of them actually went home and would create like duct tape wallets or I would have duct tape in my classroom for them to decorate theirs or however. So it got them all pumped up and excited. So, uh, and things that they could buy. So I never had to spend actual money um, creating prizes for, you know, for ways for them to cash in. Like what, what could they spend their money on? So I had things like lunch with the teacher or extra computer time, things like that. So it's just an easy way to start incorporating financial literacy and introducing words like saving or uh, earning or needs, wants, um, being yeah. responsible. Not it's to lose really it. all about being responsible because the kids that lost their money on the ground, they'd be like, I lost my money on the ground. I'm like, well, that's real life. You might lose $20 in the street. So yep. sorry. But <laughs> anyways, that's the beginning and that's beginner method. And I think that is what a lot of people try to start doing with financial literacy. And it's perfect, especially if you're a math teacher because you can incorporate math skills into there, such as um, making change. Yes, and um, I was going to say that. So I did I did try to start it off um, by having change and everything, but the kids were losing the change everywhere. So we kind of stuck with the uh, bills, like, you know, ones, tens, whatever. It was printed fake money. So, um, but in the lower grades, I did teach second, and I only used coins, I want to say, one time. And I know that you mentioned somebody using coins. Yeah, on the blog, I talk about one of my friends that yeah. used and that's and super and important. And I feel like coins, I mean, if I could go back and do it again, I would I would teach them how to be responsible with their change. And change is worth money, too. So, And it teaches them how to add and subtract decimals, things like that, too. Yeah, and it also teaches them how to... Um, to make conversions. So I have five pennies or I'm having 20 pennies now, I can change it for two dimes. So it's great for younger elementary and upper elementary also. So that's kind of like the basic stuff um, to get you started. Basically, you have a system for earning money, a system for saving money, and a system for spending money, and that's usually in a class store. Um, And then, so if you want to take that to the next level, um, something that I did in my class every year and something that the kids loved, this was the thing that every... When I run into old kids at the store or whatever, they always, they always remember, remember whenever yes. we did this or that. So basically what we did was we took it to the next level by, um, first off, the kids had to apply for jobs. And once they, I only picked six jobs a month, so not everyone could have a job, which teaches them to make their application really good. Um, so they would have their jobs and they would make their money. 
And then um, every nine weeks, we would have a market day. So leading up to that market day, the kids had to create their own businesses. So I had um, a sheet where I walked mm -hmm. them through the business making process. We talked a lot about profits, loss, expenses, business expenses, um, investments. Some of the kids didn't want to make their own items for market day. They would invest in other stores around them. So there were so many amazing, awesome conversations that were going on through this business planning process. And then once we had um, the market day, we talked a lot about types of um, spending. So mm -hmm. the kids were able to write checks. They were able to um, use their bank card. One of our class jobs was a class mm -hmm. banker and we had um, an Excel spreadsheet that that, uh, that person took care of each month. So kids could put their money in the bank for safe storing. They could withdraw money from the bank when they wanted to. Um, so we had a lot of focus on entrepreneurship, making money, spending money, investing money, making more money, and kind of the things cycle. like marketing and yes, yeah, there, all of that was built into their business plan. They talked about what to do if, if no one's buying from you at the market day, kids would throw a sell or some kids would try yes. to have an auction, like all kinds of different amazing things. And so that's kind of why it's real life is important to start this conversations early. So on the blog, there's a lot of information. Um, about how you can build financial um, literacy into your everyday activities. There are some really good books that you can look at that'll give you some ideas and help your kids, even if you just want to put it in a station for kids to read. Um, and then there are some awesome freebies. So one thing that I did to build financial literacy and to save my own sanity is I did not ever give kids a pencil, ever. They got their pencils, they came at the beginning of the year, they lost them, they better not ask me unless they're coming to me with money and I would sell them one. I did the same thing with my system. It, like, it if works. If they lost pencils, they were given a few at the beginning of the year and then once they lost them, yep, they, they had, had pay. They had their <laughs> ones they got and their school supply pack. Yes. But it, so online there's a poster you can print and just hang by your classroom door and it says nothing's free in life. That new pencil is going to cost you. And it's just, again, what Callie was talking about, building responsibility and then understanding that things in life are not free and that it is hard to make money mm -hmm. and it's easy to spend money. And there is another freebie yes. on, on here, too, that you can download. So this would be good for the beginner level, I'd say. Yeah. Um, so it's money. <laughs> and it's, what do you have? You have one. It's my very favorite Sarah Pecorino five, cute art on there. and 50s. So you can print those in color if you'd like. They're easy to cut out. You can put them, the kids can store them in wherever they want to keep their money. And one tip I had for money is that I didn't let kids write their names on their exactly, money. I never in real did life, either. we don't do that. Nope. We don't write our name and claim mm -hmm. it. And that way I could reuse that. I didn't have to, when someone ex bought something from me, I didn't have to remake my bills. I yeah. would reuse them. And I also left, like, whenever I gave out money, it was honestly just from earning good grades. It wasn't so much, um, oh, I helped so-and-so with something or something like that. I didn't give money for good behavior, I'd say, because they should be doing that, you know? So, um, yeah, think more... about what you have to do to earn money in your life. You I don't, don't get, get paid it. to help Cassie buy a coffee at Starbucks. <laughs> <laughs> you don't get paid for being nice to me. Yeah, it would be you nice. are nice to me all the time. I'm a millionaire. <laughs> you would <laughs> but anyways so it's really however you want to use the money system in your classroom but these are just a few ways that or a few things that we did in the past and they really helped and the kids love it and they're learning and what's better than having fun and learning at the same time yeah so, so go over to the blog castingnoac.com and check out um, our post on financial literacy and you can get a lot more ideas and we would love 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 to see what you do in your class if you have a market day or a class yeah. store or a section Everybody of your class financial literacy we love that. Yeah. so tag us on Instagram so we can see what you're doing and um, let us know if you have any questions yep I think that's it that's it that's all folks we're gonna go spend some money <laughs> Bye. bye